right, good afternoon. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to be evaluating some graphs of functions. Um, it's going to assist us later on in this chapter with the number of solutions that each function might have, which then creates how many answers we have to find for every function. So it's a pretty important chapter. It's calculator based, and I'm going to show you how to do things on the calculator today. Um, and then after the video is done with, you get some time hopefully to go over and um, work with the calculators, play with them, make sure that you can see what we're talking about today on this graph. So before we get into here, let's talk a little bit about what a polynomial is and what a function is. Okay, So a polynomial is an uh, expression. You can simplify it. You can factor. You can add them. You can subtract them. You can multiply them. You can divide them. But what you can't do is you cannot You can't solve them, and you can't graph them, because there's no equal sign. Okay? They're not solvable, and they're not graphable. Okay? Polynomial functions, those are equations. These are solvable and graphable. Oops, spelled it wrong. Okay. The standard form of a polynomial or of a polynomial function has the terms in descending order of exponents from left to right. So the biggest exponent goes right next to the equal sign or on the far left, then the next biggest one, then the next biggest one, then the next biggest one, and so on and so forth, until you have a constant left over at the end. Okay? So if this were my function, and I'd want to write it in standard form, I would rewrite it as f of x is equal to, so x to the fourth is my biggest um, term here. So that's going to be negative 5x to the fourth. There is no, oops, there is an x cubed. So then there is plus 2x cubed would be next. Minus x squared would be next. There is no x term, so then plus 4 would come at it. So that is standard form of my function. Now, you'll hear me refer to later on to something called the lead coefficient, and this right here is the lead coefficient. It's the number in front I'm missing an I. Yep, I'm missing an I in there. It's the number in front of the biggest degreed term in my function or in my expression. Okay, so that's the lead coefficient. Okay? So let's talk here now about the degree and the type of polynomial functions. Okay? So the first kind of polynomial function we have is a constant function. Okay? And a constant function will look like a horizontal line. Okay? 
So that's what a, a constant function is. It's a horizontal line. Okay. A linear function has a degree of 1 because the biggest exponent here is 1. Okay? So that is going to be all of your lines. And so your lines are going to look like, let's go creative again. It's either going to look like this or it's going to look like that. So those are your lines, non-vertical, non-horizontal lines. Okay. Next one is, has a degree of 2 because your biggest exponent is 2. Those are your quadratic functions. Those are your parabolas. Those are going to be your u's. I'm going to switch out here and Go to something a little smaller, okay? Or your camel humps. A cubic, we talked about last year in Algebra 2. A cubic function is going to look like that or that. Okay, but they go in opposite directions. A quartic function is going to look like a W or an M. Now, if you notice the pattern going on here, okay, so we'll start with a degree of 1, they're going in opposite directions, thinking back to um, Algebra 2 last year and geometry the year before. Okay. Quartic or quadratic functions, degree of 2, they're going, the sides are going in the same direction. Cubic functions, they're going, the sides are going in opposite directions again. Quartic functions, they're going in the same direction. So that if I said if we had f of x here equaling x to the fifth, a fifth degree function those then would also go in opposite directions. Or if we went to f of x equals x to the 6th, which is a degree of 6, those would then end up going in the same direction. Kind of like a potato masher. Okay. So the degree is the biggest exponent. And the type is what the graph looks like. Okay? But remember, degree is the biggest exponent. Okay? So now we're going to talk about end behavior. It's what the function is doing on the left and right sides of your graph. So our first function is f of x equals x cubed. Now, 
we could graph this using a t-chart and that could take a long time and we get really big numbers really fast or we can go right to our function. Now, what I did here is I started out with a brand new document because I'm a brand new document kind of a guy. Okay? And then I chose graphs and then I typed in x cubed. And there is my x cubed function. So the end behavior of this graph, this is reading down here as x goes to positive infinity. Okay, hold on, let me get off of this now because now I got that. Okay, so as, as x goes to positive infinity. So x here, my x functions, I'm going to positive infinity. So I'm looking at the right side of my graph. Okay. My function is going up and to the right. So my function is going off to positive infinity. Okay. With your end behaviors for now, your end behaviors are going to go to an infinity. When we get into rational functions in December, we're going to have, they might go to a number. They might not go to positive infinity. Okay? Then, as x goes to negative infinity, so that's as x is going to the left, my function is shooting straight down. Okay? So my function is going down as it goes to the left. So that means my function is going to negative infinity. Okay? Now I knew that those were going to be different because the degree of my function was 3. So since the degree was odd, I knew it had to go in opposite directions. So therefore I knew it was either going to go to positive infinity and positive infinity or positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay? So it's going to go in opposite directions. Okay? Let's try this next one now. So I go back to my graph and I can add a page and that page is going to be another graph and my function here is going to be negative one half oops, x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 3. Okay. So there is my graph. Sometimes you might have to zoom out a little bit to see it. Okay, So we can zoom out a little bit. We can move it around. Okay, But so there is my graph. So as x here is going to positive infinity, so as my x is going to the right, my function is now shooting down, so that means I'm going to negative infinity there. And as x is going to the left, as I'm going to negative infinity, my function is going up, so that means that one is going to positive infinity. Okay? Now, another way to remember that from, out from first semester Algebra 2, it was really early on, it was probably about this time last year in Algebra 2, that you got to that is you look at two things. The first thing you look at is the degree of the polynomial. If it's odd, they're going in opposite directions. If it's even, they're going in the same direction. And then the second thing you look at is the lead coefficient. If the lead coefficient is positive, it's going to look like this left graph with an odd function. Okay? With an odd degree, I should say. And it's going to, if the lead coefficient is negative, it's going to look like that with an odd function on the right side of this page. Okay. So 
So the two questions that you ask yourself, is the highest power on these functions odd or even? Is the sine of the leap coefficient positive or negative? Okay, let's try that as we go forward and then we'll verify it with, the, with graphs. So I'm looking at this one and the degree of this function is 4, which is even. The lead coefficient of this function is 1, so that's positive. So the even degree tells me that they're both going in the same direction. The lead coefficient positive tells me that it's going to look something like this, and it's going to go up for both. So as x goes to the right, I'm going to positive infinity. As x goes to the left, it's also going up, I'm going to positive infinity. Let's verify that now on a graph. Just going to change this one here to be 4. Oops, got the brakes. What's going on? So there is that function. Just as we predicted, it's going up in both directions. Okay, so now I'm looking at number four here, and I'm saying to myself, well, my degree is even. It's four. My lead coefficient is negative. So this one is probably going to go like that. My guess is that it's going to go down with some kind of a hump in it because there's more terms in it. Let's go and let's verify. So here is negative 3x to the fourth power plus 5x squared. And yes, the exact thing that we had predicted happened for us. So just as we predicted, as x is going to the right, my function is going to negative infinity. It's going down. And as x is going to negative infinity, or to the left, my function is also going down. Okay? So that's end behavior for us. Okay? So, to kind of wrap this all up, what does as x goes to positive infinity mean? That means that we're looking at the right side of our function. As x goes to negative infinity, that means the left side of our function. Okay. When the highest power is odd, we can expect the general shape. It's going to go in opposite directions. Okay. And that's going to occur when my lead coefficient is positive. And then we're going to go to positive infinity on the right and negative infinity on the left. Now, for each and every single one of them, whenever you're writing out end behavior, you have to write out this whole thing. You can't shortcut this in any way. That is shortcutted as far as it can go. As x goes to positive infinity, f of x also goes to positive infinity. That whole thing gets written out whenever you're talking about end behavior. Okay. The other way is going to look like this. So that would have a lead coefficient that is negative. And then as x goes to positive infinity, our function goes to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, our function goes to positive infinity. When the highest power is even, then we can expect the general shape to look like this. That's going to happen when the lead coefficient 
is positive or it's going to be flipped over when the lead coefficient is negative. Okay? So that in this case, they're both going to go to positive infinity as, both, as x goes to positive infinity and as it goes to negative infinity, the function is going to shoot up. And on the other one, as they go, it's going to shoot to negative infinity. Okay? A lot of this stuff is logic. Okay? It's straight up logic. Okay? It's what the graph is doing as you go through. And you can use a graphing calculator to graph it if you want. You can plot points and see where the function is going. You know, you could put in huge numbers. You know, if I go back to this, back to this one right here, okay? If I put in a ginormous number into this function, okay? If I put in like a million, that's going to be a million times a million times a million times a million, all positive, and that's all going to be positive, and it's going to be a super ginormous number. So that means I'm way over here, and I'm way up there, okay? So that means as I'm going to positive infinity, I'm going to positive infinity. Then, I conversely, I can put in a huge negative number, okay? So my huge negative number would be something like negative a million. And I put that in and I take that to the fourth power, well, that's going to be a negative times a negative, which is a positive, times a negative, which is negative, times a negative, which is positive again. So as I'm going way over here, I'm also going way up there. It's just a lot of logic for you. Okay? So tonight on your homework, okay, here is your homework. It is page... Uh, 342, numbers 24 through 51, multiples of 3. There are some graphs that go along with them, but honestly, you can just sketch these graphs on your paper. You don't have to have graph paper in order to do this homework. You can just simply sketch the graphs on your paper. You can use a graphing calculator to get the general shape of it. Just, I want you working with these functions, finding their end behavior, working with knowing the patterns, seeing the patterns to make the rest of this calendar year much easier for you. Okay? So the rest of the time is yours to work. I strongly encourage you to work because you probably don't have a graphing calculator at home that you can use. There should be a box of them somewhere in the room. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.